Today, um, let me just remind you of uh, uh, things that will be happening in the next few weeks. First, I would like to say about the uh, that the rule and guidance about the use of face covering and social distancing is still in place while we gather in the church building. And also, can I remind you about the Coffee on the Lawn, an event, an outreach family event, uh, which is uh, intended to bring people together. I want you to invite your friends. I would like to see as many as possible from the congregation as well at the Rectory Grand on the 21st of August at 10 a.m. We've got the Bouncy Castle for children, so children will have their own soft play. We're having a garden uh uh, games as well and uh, I love playing table tennis. I'm having a challenge already so I hope uh, people will come. If you like to play table tennis please come along and let us play play together. There will be some other uh, games you know garden games as well so for children and for adults. I cannot guarantee uh, cricket but <laughs> If you know how to play cricket, I was at the cricket, cricket grand uh, last week uh, for the first time here in Warren. Stand, so bring your kids along as long as you don't break the rectory windows. Well, another thing I'd like to say, uh, I'll talk about is the back to school event on the 27th of August for all children returning back to school. We'd like to meet them, we want to pray with them, uh, we want to share with them and encourage them, prepare the ma their mind as they uh, approach the uh, autumn term, the new term starting September. So if you know of anyone going to year eight or people are, you know, returning to secondary school, please tell them about this event. It's an outdoor event as well at the Rectory Grand on the 27th of August at 6.30 p.m. It's going to be a short event, 6.30 p.m. And they will hopefully get a gift uh, as well when they attend. Down and Dromo Bible Week at Shankill Parish begins on the 1st of September on through to the 3rd of September at 7.30 p.m. Um, the bishop invited Reverend Mark, who will be hoping the word of God to us from the book of Jonah. And the theme of that event is a confident church, a confident church. We want to say many thanks to the work party for their hard work in tidying the grounds, including the graveyard at Holy Trinity Church last Tuesday evening. The work you've done is much appreciated by all, and we want to say well done to those who attended. Well, for some of you going out through that door, you probably notice that we have scraped down the walls of uh, uh, the wall around the pouch over there. Uh, it's actually. Uh, we found dry rot in the roof area of the side porch of the church and that has spread to the fabric and also the gable wall in the baptistry area. But work to remedy this, including chemical treatment and replastering, will be ongoing for a number of weeks. But I want to say no inconvenience should be caused to worshippers. So feel free to keep coming and we will try to keep everyone safe. I think that is all the notices which I would like to draw attention to. David wrote in one of his Psalms, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And now we have that opportunity this morning to rejoice in the King of Kings as we sing together our opening hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
lift up our eyes and our voice rejoicing in the Lord who is King. We recall our disobedience to God's commandment and our failure to do His will. Therefore, let us kneel and confess our sins to God, our Father, using the words of confession which you'll find at the front of your service sheet. Please let us pray. And we say together, Almighty God, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Here are words of assurance of God's forgiveness, which we find um, which we found in the scripture. God is slow to anger and full of compassion. He forgives all who humbly repent and trust in his Son as Savior and Lord. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now we come to the, uh, the kids' praise. I'm glad that we've got the computer uh, working. And uh, we can have our kids' praise that talks about the peace, the joy, the love of God, which is in us. And we've got it in abundance. And for all these things, we are thankful. So children, I want you to buckle up, be ready, because this is going to be very, very fast. And I want you to do the actions. And let's sing about the peace of God, which we've got like a river. Like a river, the one you saw when you went on your summer holiday, the ocean that you saw uh, when you went on summer holiday. Let's stand and sing that song together. I've got peace like a river. is fantastic. Now I'm not sure if I was able to get that very fast piece, love, joy, like a river in my soul. Please let us be seated. Before we come to our Bible reading for this morning, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you give us understanding of your word and the will to put it into practice. Give blessing to the reading of your word, for in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I 
Pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please let us stand as we affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and heart. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. The college for the 10th Sunday after Trinity. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we pray that you hear the prayers which we offer in faith and love. We pray for peace and for salvation to be known throughout the world. We pray for missionaries all over the world that they will be strengthened by your spirit as they bring the gospel of salvation to all people. We pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and for the unity of all Christian people. We pray for all who serve and lead in your church. We pray for our parish here in Donacloni. And we remember the parochial nominators in our prayer as they carry out their enormous task of finding and seeking a new rector in our parish. We pray that you will guide them, O oh Lord, by your spirit. And we pray that you will give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation, just as we will learn in your word today. We pray for our diocese of Down and Dromo, for Bishop David, for all presbyters and deacons. We pray for all your people growing in the faith of Christ and passing it on to generations yet to come. We pray for parish members. Here in Dona Cloney, we give you thanks for their faithfulness and trust in Christ. We pray that we will grow more in our faith in Jesus and in our love towards one another. We pray that you will open our spiritual eyes to see the hope of an inheritance which we have in Christ. Lord, we pray for all who live and work in this community of Warrenstown and Dona Cloney. We pray for all businesses and we pray for all the farmers 
We pray for the health services. We pray for the police and all other people that work to keep us safe. We pray for families and for those who live alone. Lord God, we pray that there will no more of your abiding presence and love. Especially, Lord, we pray for those who are lonely and are elderly. We pray for those who are housebound. Let them know more of your abiding presence, O oh Lord. And let them feel the warmth of your love always with them. We pray for all who are sick in body or in mind and for those who care for them. Especially in our prayer, we pray for Stanley. We pray for Tommy. And we pray for June. For all in authority, we pray for those who have the responsibility of government. We pray for the executive that meets at Stormont and the ones that meet at Westminster. Guide them, O oh Lord, by your spirit in their decision making. We pray that your spirit will guide them so that they will be able to rule us in just and righteousness. We pray, Lord Jesus, for Eastern European countries where there is wildfire. We pray for relief for those who have been persecuted around the world. And all together, Lord, rejoicing in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs, and for all your servants who are not well or who are facing the end of life. We pray for them, O oh Lord, that you will increase their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So pray for their family that you will give them the strength and the grace to share love with these people. And Lord God, we bring our prayers together and the prayer that the Lord Jesus taught his disciples using the Lord's prayer, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on heart as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we come to the sermon for today, which is a continuation of our sermon series, which we started last Sunday, let us stand and sing together our next hymn, Jesus Shall Reign Where uh, the Sun.
Bismillah Rasul Bismillah Rasul Bismillah Rasul Paul wrote to the church in Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 15 and 16. He said, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you open the eyes of our hearts to the truth of your word and to the hope of our calling in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. For those who love sports and for those who follow the Olympics, Team GB has been doing absolutely incredibly at the Tokyo Olympic and we are so thankful to the contingents for bringing honor to our country. Although not many people can be at the event venue, as spectators are not allowed. But through the news, the media, we heard about the progress of the team and we are happy and thankful for their efforts in the Olympics. But from our reading in Ephesians this morning, Paul was thankful not about the Olympic in Tokyo or Team GB's achievement, but Paul was thankful for the way of life of the believers in Ephesus. And for other things, he remembered them in his prayer. Thankfulness and supplication. Sometimes we find, I mean, we struggle to find balance between thankfulness and supplication. But Paul was able to identify why he needs to be thankful and for those things that he needs to ask in supplication. But you may ask, what are the two things that Paul was thankful for? Let's consider those two things first in my first sermon point, which I called continual thankfulness. See with me in verse 15, Paul wrote, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. This verse begins with the phrase, for this reason. But we were not told for what reason or the experience of these believers. It could be good experience, it could be bad experience, but for whatever reason, for whatever situation they found themselves, it has made them to grow in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and it has also helped them to be more loving as Christians. Paul was thankful for their faith, which can also be called their trust in the Lord. And he was also thankful for their love for other believers. A Bible scholar called John Stott said, it is impossible to be in Christ and not to find oneself drawn both to him in trust and to his people in love. The believers that we're talking about here, they are in Christ and we realize that the church, that is the group of people, the group of believers in Ephesus were drawn, they found themselves drawn to a continual trust in Jesus not only that, also found themselves in love with other believers. But why is this so important? And why should Paul be thankful for these attributes that is found in these people? Why is this so important? If you reflect back to what we learned in our first study last Sunday, in joining the sermon, I mean in the sermon, we realize that the community of faith in Ephesus comprises of both the Jews and the Gentiles. 
It comprises of people from different background, different understanding and behavior, different way of life. But there are people who have been adopted into sonship of God. There are people who have received the gospel of salvation, as Paul wrote in chapter 1, verse 5. They've been adopted into the same family of God. But such people are not without challenges of life. People of different ideologies brought together under the same umbrella of believing in Christ Jesus. Maybe you can help me because I don't have either of these two. Can you keep dog and cat in the same house without any trouble? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes, of course, yeah. <laughs> it's possible. Absolutely. But sometimes we have challenges, you know, in keeping the two of them together. Well, maybe you're thinking too far about having dog and cat in the same house. Even among families, if you keep two people that doesn't think the same way together, they have challenges of their own. It could be internal, it could be external challenges. You see, the people of God that we're talking about here, they are not cat and dog, but they are people of different ideologies united together in faith, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Such people have their own challenges. And I believe that challenges, I mean challenges are real life challenges. Like I said, it could be internal challenges, which could be issue of coexistence. They might be facing issues of discrimination and prejudice, just as we might experience in our world today. Although these Christians are made up of people of different tribe and culture, but they are united in God and faith in Christ. Apart from the internal challenges that these people might be facing, they might also be facing external challenges like persecution as they stand up for Christ in the community. But one good thing is this. One good thing is that the persecution and challenges of life that these people faced actually helped them to grow in their faith in the Lord Jesus. As we see in verse 15, for this reason, reason which we did not know, but we believe the reason or whatever situation they have faced, whether good or bad, has helped their faith to grow in the Lord Jesus and also their love for all the saints. Verse 15. The same should go with, I mean, for us as children of God today. The persecution and challenges of life which we face for belonging to God should increase our faith in Christ and our love for one another. The love we share as church family should make us stand up and support one another. I remember on a Sunday after church service, I was encouraged when someone said to me, we are all in this together. We are all in this together, George. This shows love and support for the ministry here in the parish. And can I encourage you this morning that if you know of someone who is in any kind of trouble or distress or any kind of pain, such words of comfort might be of help and it might also be encouraging as well. Whatever struggle of life we face, let it not affect our trust or faith in God. Let it not affect our love for one another in a negative way. But let it unite us in Christ. Let it promote our faith and trust in God. And let it help our relationship with one another. Let us remain strong. 
Let us hold tight to God's promises. Let us hold on to our faith in him. Let us continue to share God's love with one another. Paul said, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Why? Since he heard about their faith in the Lord Jesus and their love for all the saints. Continual growth in faith and love will result in thankfulness to God, who is the author of both qualities, just as Paul did in verse 15. And as we progress in this teaching this morning, we realize that Paul did not only give thanks for the qualities found among the believers in Ephesus. He didn't only give thanks for the faith and the love which they express in their way of life. He also prays for them. And that leads me to my second and final point this morning. Paul's fervent prayer. What are Paul's prayers for the believers in Ephesus? Are these prayers what we need in the church today? See with me from verse 17. He said from verse end of 16, he said, Remembering you in my prayers, he said, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Why do they need the spirit of wisdom and revelation? It goes on to say, so that you may know him better. The fact is that these believers already know God. That is why they are able to increase in faith and trust in God. But there is no ending about the knowledge of God. And that is why Paul prays for them. He prays that they will know more of God. He wasn't praying for them to come to new faith in Christ. No. But he was praying for something that is more important. He was praying for their eyes to be opened to certain things about God. To know God, you need your spiritual eyes to be open to certain things about God, which will further strengthen their faith and their love for one another. But what are those things that we need to know more about God? What are those things that we need, that needs to be revealed to us about God? The most important thing which we need to know is to understand the hope of God's call. We need wisdom and revelation to understand the hope of God's call. Paul says it can only be gained by the opening of spiritual eyes, the opening of our spiritual eyes to God's call to rouse, to belong to Jesus Christ and into the fellowship of Jesus Christ. We talk about God's call. Paul said in verse 17, he says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Yeah, you're asking for wisdom and revelation to do what? To know the hope to which he has called you. He prays for our spiritual eyes to be enlightened, to be opened, that we may know the hope to which he has called us and the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. You may ask, George, what is God's call? What is the hope of God's call that Paul was talking about here? It is not called to ordain ministry, but rather it is called to the understanding that we belong to Jesus. We are called into fellowship of Jesus Christ, and we know this from God's word in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, which says, God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And in Romans chapter 1 verse 6, it says, And you also are among those Gentiles who are called 
to belong to Jesus Christ. We need God's wisdom and revelation to understand the hope of God's call. And what is the call? We are called to belong to Jesus Christ, as we see in Romans 1, 6. And for this reason, for this understanding, for the wisdom and the revelation to know more about God's call, Paul prayed for the believers in Ephesus in verse 18. He says, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Why do we need an open spiritual eye? It went on to say, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. The hope to which he has called us is to belong to him. Uh, but, but what about the riches of his inheritance in the saints? The inheritance of God. In the saint is what Peter described as imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. It is that place that is kept in heaven for yourself and myself. It is a place that God wants to share with us. And that is what Paul wants us to have an understanding about. Because the hope of that inheritance keeps us stronger in faith and in love to one another. About that inheritance of the saints, hear what Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Peter said, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. And that is why in his prayer, in his fervent prayer, Paul said that every believer may realize the hope of sharing together with God in heaven, his dwelling place. He was thankful for the faith and the trust of the people in the Lord. He was thankful for the love that these believers share together with one another despite the challenges of life they face. And he prayed for their spiritual eyes to be opened to the hope that we have. The hope of God's call. The call to belong to Jesus and also to the riches of his inheritance in the saints, which is heaven, the dwelling place of God that he wants to share with us, a place that is imperishable, a place that never spoils, a place that never fades. When we have this hope, we will be encouraged and strengthened in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. From our reading, lastly, Paul prayed for God's power and strength, which would keep the believers from the beginning of our knowledge of God, which comes through the gospel of salvation, which we've had, to the end, at his revelation, the wisdom about the hope of sharing eternity with Christ in heaven. But between those two extremes, we need the strength of God. We need the power of God to continue to grow in Christ Jesus. And that is why Paul prayed for the Holy Spirit of God. Because the Holy Spirit will give us the power and strength needed in the journey of faith. Paul said in verse 19, and it's incomparably great power for us who believe. The power that is incomparable is what Paul prayed for. Those who believe to keep us going, to help us in this journey of faith. But how strong is that Holy Spirit? How strong is the power that we're talking about here? Paul talks about the greatness of this power from verse 19 to verse 23. 
It is by God's power, by his Holy Spirit, that we can fulfill the expectation which belongs to his call and bring us safely to the riches of the glory of the final inheritance he will give us in heaven. It's not by power, not human power, not human strength. But it's by the Holy Spirit of God that we can sail safe to the shores of heaven. And the Bible assures us this morning that God's power is sufficient for us as Christians. We see the evidence of the sufficiency of God's Holy Spirit in us as Paul illustrates in verse 20. He talked about the same power that works in the resurrection of Jesus. The power that raised Jesus up from the dead. The power that placed him above all powers and principalities. It is that same power, the same power with the same potency that God will deposit in those who believe in him. It is that power that seals us to the end of the age. It is that power that helps us to keep going, to keep going. Despite the challenges of life, it equips us in the journey of faith. And Paul concludes in verse 23 that the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and his enthronement over powers of evil has given him the headship over the church. So as we journey to heaven, we come to realize that Jesus is the head of the church and the church is the group of believers, people who are called to belong to Christ. So as I conclude this morning, let us continue to grow in faith in our Lord Jesus and love for one another. And for these reasons, as we grow in faith and love, let us continually be thankful to God, who is the author of both qualities. Let us continually pray that the Lord will open our spiritual eyes to the hope of belonging to him, which is God's call upon us. And also of sharing with him in the inheritance of the saints, which is heaven. A place that is prepared for the saints in Christ, the holy, those people who are blameless in Christ Jesus. And as we wait for his return to take us home, let us continually pray for God's Holy Spirit, which will give us power and strength that we need as we continue to love and serve the Lord in the world around us. In the name of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for our faith in Christ Jesus and for the love we share together as church family here in Donacloni. We pray that this may increase by your grace. We pray for your Holy Spirit to help us in our journey of faith. We pray that your Holy Spirit will give us strength and power when we face challenges of life so that we may grow in the knowledge and love of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may grow in the wisdom and revelation of God's call upon our life and the hope of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, as we, as we reflect upon the words of the sermon for this morning, let's bring our service to uh, a, a, a close. Let's finish our service this morning with this lovely uh, song. It's a song of pilgrimage, a song that encourages us, that talks about our eyes, spiritual eyes being opened to the riches of God's glory. Be thou my vision.
Hear the word of the Lord. In favor, I will enlighten the eyes of your heart that you might fully understand the hope to which he called you, even the glorious inheritance of the saints. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Hope to see you all next week. And I wish you a pleasant week ahead. God bless.